Today on Paranormal Insights, we're going to take a look at super soldiers and how they could affect the U.S. population. And we have a question from Tanya, wanting to know if she's moving to a new city. And we go to the UFO Expo to talk with Brett Luter, who's a UFO researcher and author. I'm Joseph Ernest Martin. And I'm Marcus Thorndike. And this is Paranormal Insights, where we bring you the latest and best from the metaphysical world. Here you'll get real tools and insights to your questions as we bring you answers from beyond the ordinary. Marcus is a master hand analyst and life purpose consultant. He is the author of the upcoming book, Leap, the global campaign for life, love, and the achievement of happiness for all. Joseph is an award-winning psychic of over 25 years and is the author of the international bestseller, The Quest to Row. He's the recipient of the Visionary Award of Excellence. You know, this whole issue scares the heck out of me. Uh, the whole concept of genetically modifying our bodies to uh, be able to run 10 times faster or to lift 10 times stronger or to go days and days without sleep uh, it, it, uh, and turning ourselves into Frankensteins uh, just strikes me as really, in, I'm sorry, but insane. It is insane. And it's it, insane because it is something we don't know how to control. It's not like something simple like a water faucet. We know how to turn it on and turn it off and whatever we want to do, we can make it happen. They are tinkering with things that we do not know the ramifications of, especially since these super soldiers are going to be procreating with what? Other super soldiers, other humans, I mean, you know, normal humans. Right. And then what, what happens with that coupling? We already know what happens with certain kinds of human coupling where the offspring can have birth defects. We don't even know what can happen here. And more importantly, the point that, that I believe that you made so beautifully is all technologies of harm, all military technologies, are co-opted by terrorists and dictators and tyrants at some point. It is clear to me that these super soldier technologies are quickly leading our entire global civilization toward the need to answer a fundamental question in the years ahead. Is it finally time for us, as a species, to call for an end to the use of war itself as an instrument of national policy? We may end up turning the entire world, and even the U.S. itself, into a warlike zone of potential combat for super soldiers and the creation of super police. In the very recent and vivid example of Ferguson, Missouri, we, ha we as a country have witnessed the use of military-style force being used against a civilian population here in the United States. If these super soldier technologies go into use in our military, they will very likely then be adopted by some of our police forces. Are you ready to see such things in your town as happened in Ferguson? But instead, with police that use these super soldier technologies? I sure am not. These super soldier technologies will probably, like all military technology before it, be co-opted by other nations or by terrorist groups and then used against us, requiring us to respond with the creation of even more powerful super soldiers. This never-ending escalation of military technology and super soldiering is not a world I ever wish to live in. If we as a global civilization do not turn ourselves back from this course of ever more powerful military technology and super soldier development, and I do not see any other way for us to turn back from these directions than the people of the world coming together to genuinely call for an end to war as an instrument of national policy by all nations, well, then we inevitably run the risk of destroying our freedoms, our hearts, and even perhaps our very minds as genetic or technological super soldiers begin to take over the world. Yes, and even the, the whole, we combine that with like microchipping implantation and you end up with something that's very much like the recent movie Divergent, where there's this whole tribe of police type beings that are taken over and co-opted and have no control or ability to think for themselves any longer. So these aren't really human beings anymore. So where, is that, where are their rights? Where are their capacities to choose, to feel? They're no longer really human. In the military's efforts to improve how they fight wars, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, today has a long-term $3 billion program to create super soldiers. 
The drugs and genetic enhancements that DARPA wants to create is days of no sleep without performance degradation, regeneration of tissue and faster healing, immunity to pain, enhanced significant muscle strength and cognitive enhancement. The metabolically dominant soldier program is managed by Joseph Belitsky. The benefits beyond military might that DARPA claims will result from their research includes revolutionizing healthcare through better healing, better regeneration, and improved immune systems. They'll also boost the economy by enhancing cognitive training and energy levels, including weight loss, by fixing cells to allow a person to live off their fat. A major focus of DARPA is on helping the soldier's body to better deal with trauma and damage. Projects in the pipeline range from drugs that would boost muscles and energy by a factor of 10, which would be akin to steroids. And one Pfizer-acquired drug that will block the sense of pain for almost a month, according to DARPA's Michael Goldblatt. These drugs are really genetically modified DNA inside a living virus that is injected into the human body. If DARPA is successful, and if the American people don't object, the soldiers of the future will be genetically modified transhumans capable of superhuman feats. It feels like a virus that if it was to enter the human population would quickly start to infect all other regions and all other areas of human existence. We, they would be everywhere. And uh, that would alter, talk about a brave new world. That is, uh, that is one of the most frightening uh, possibilities I can yet imagine. Uh, I have a niece and two nephews, and I don't want them to live in a world like that. It frightens the heck out of me, as I've said. According to adventure author David Meyer, the Nazis were deeply interested in developing a permanent master race. In 1935, they set up a sort of breeding, child-rearing program, which they would actually kidnap Aryan children from occupied countries. This program also provided special breeding clinics for SS soldiers who were given hand-picked breeding partners. The goal was to create a large and lasting Aryan race who would serve as the super soldiers of the future. Additionally, the average Nazi soldier received a regular intake of pills designed to improve their performance. Surviving records show that over 200 million Pervitin pills were provided to Nazi soldiers. Pervitin was made of methamphetamine, or as it's now called, crystal meth. They were also given D9, which was a cocaine-based cocktail consisting of five milligrams of cocaine, five milligrams of oxycodone, a morphine-related painkiller, and three milligrams of pervitin, crystal meth. They hoped to use this drug to create temporary super soldiers who would eventually turn the tide in the war in favor of the Nazis. Highly encouraged by the test results, Nazi scientists planned to supply D9 to all German troops. Fortunately, the war ended before it could be produced in mass quantities. Despite their best efforts, the Nazis never succeeded in creating super soldiers. Yet, if scientists have their way Someday, soon, super soldiers may be commonplace. What do we do with them, too? <laughs> it's just, as you said, a Pandora's box, where the more you poke it apart, the more messy and messy the whole thing becomes. Uh, I really uh, can't see a way of, of stopping it other than the people coming together and saying, you know, it's, it's, we've reached a limit. We've reached a point where we can't do this. Um, uh, I'm very worried of the direction that this is taking. We already know what it is to tamper with food. The genetic makeup of corn is a big one, as well as many, many other food products. And we know that GMO labeling is important because a lot of people, they, they don't want to put genetically modified anything in their bodies because there isn't a million years of evolution saying that we can handle that modification. And I don't want to be a science experiment for someone doing an experiment simply because they feel they can and it would be interesting 
to see the effect of doing this work. To me, it's the wrong use of science, and it's, it's not being done in a sane or healthy way. Oh, absolutely. You can imagine with them doing genetic modification where they inject a virus into you. Now imagine that person having sex with other people. That modification will pass on. The next thing we knew, it's spreading throughout the population. And now we're off to the UFO Expo with Brett Luter, UFO expert and author. <laughs> We're here at the UFO conference with Brett Luter. And Brett has been speaking here at this conference about a very special topic. We've all seen UFOs, we've seen them flying around, but they seem to have a certain kind of agenda that they're following with the increase in sightings and the change in sightings. Is it possible that the UFO phenomenon is almost following like a public relations campaign? That is my contention. That was the subject of my lecture yesterday. Um, very simple presentation. I know a lot of the presentations are very technical. This is very simple. Uh, the structure of a public relations campaign is very simple. There's an adaptation phase, a strategy phase, and an evaluation phase. When you apply that structure to the history of UFO activity, interesting correlations come up. For example, in the adaptation phase, there is something called full situation analysis. Before any corporation or anything can go try to put their image out into the public, they need to research what the public thinks of them, that kind of thing. It would appear that they had an early strategy in the 50s to directly, just very simply directly contact qualified human beings. By qualified, I mean abductees that fit the Wendell Stevens abductee profile, which men were very humble, they were not ambitious, they were just family men, oftentimes farmers, rural people. Those would be qualified uh, because those are the people that have integrity. So I think they contacted those people to see what would happen, a response analysis. They're going to test the market, so to speak, see what happens. Well, after like 10 years of that, say, or, or more, there's, there's, there's bleeding over. It's not a distinct demarcation. They, I think they found that we reacted with fear. We reacted um, as if we didn't understand what was going on. Our militaries sent planes out to try to fight them futilely and um, the public would treat these people, these contactees who would come out and try to just tell the truth about their experience, treat them with ridicule. So if you're an organization, let's call them UFOs Incorporated, are looking down and they see this response, they think, well, maybe we got to change our approach a bit. And so I don't think you see many of those friendly contacts anymore. I think they still go on because there's many, many species coming here and each one of them has their own campaign. So they might all try that same tactic first. But what you see more of now is these darker abductions bleeding into the demonic realm. Um, I have had some women come forward recently and they're having some kind of strange activity, dark entity, alien, demon, I don't know. But this is more of the theme. And so I think the good guys have kind of backed off. I, I want to know, can you do anything that would allow the better contact to happen? Or is that kind of out of our hands? I think, curiously, we are the center of the action. And if we get our own house in order, you get your house, I get my house, everyone gets their individual houses in order, we will attract the right kind of beings. I think it's because we don't have our stuff in order. We're not spiritually aligned with ourselves, with our higher selves. We don't understand who we are that leaves a door open. In other words, we doubt ourselves. And when, when doubt happens, stuff comes in. And I think that's what we're experiencing now. I don't think it's as negative as maybe some people would think, because we're being tested all the time. And the good guys, they don't want to have a bunch of sissy friends. They want us to be able to come up and bring ourselves to the table so we can dine with these people. I don't personally think we need help from good ETs because this is our gig. We came down here because we thought we could do it. That's, that's why I think I agreed to come down here by contract. They say we're bound in the flesh. Well, that means that's a contract, you know, binding. And um, I'm not saying no to help, <laughs> but I don't always pull over at the gas station and ask for directions right away. Yes. I try to do it myself first. 
much to the chagrin of, of a partner or two that I've had, you know. And I, I think what you're saying too, and you, get, you can correct me if, I, if I'm not getting this quite right, but you know, we used to have this idea of there was a king ruling, king queen ruling by divine right or divine blood, and we were always acquiescing to some sort of power above right. us. And I think that we're shifting away from that, and we don't want to transfer that to the ETs. You don't want to make them the new king queen no. power above us. We want to come up so that we can come play with them as equals. The good guys don't want to be worshipped. They want us as equals or to help us bring us up. The bad guys want us to worship them. And this is where you get the Stargate SG-1 kind of scenarios. Uh, the Stargate movie was brilliant. Kurt Russell could be the best movie he ever did. Um, they want us to, to worship them in the same way that the Indians worship the Europeans. Matter of fact, that's the, that was probably a test. That was probably a, a response analysis in a giant PR campaign that's tens of thousands of years old. How did it work? It worked brilliantly. So now they're going to use that strategy again on us in the future. It's just, it's so simple once you compare this to a public relations campaign. And so the point of that is that when you, somebody's consciously trying to get you to think something that you wouldn't normally think, that's a red flag, man. If you can't just come out and tell me the truth, then get out of here. And they're not, we're not being, I mean, Billy Myers said Semyase, uh, no, excuse me, Wendell Stevens, when I interviewed him, said that Semyase lied to Billy Myers on a couple of occasions. If they're so advanced, what do they need to lie for? What do they for? need to lie for, exactly? The truth has got to be enough. It's, and fantastic enough on its own. You know, we're, we're not, I think we are as advanced as they are. We just don't know it. Mm -hmm. We don't know ourselves. We're the most advanced beings. That's why everyone's paying attention to us. That's why books like the Bible are centered around us. That doesn't mean that we're the center of the universe, but we got some mojo here. And I honestly believe we got to expect aliens to actually kind of think and act a bit alien to how we would think because they have a whole different perspective, whole different evolution, whole different everything. You know, if they're using a public relations campaign, they're not smarter than us. <laughs> they're, they're, we're already equals and we just don't know it. Look, Sun Tzu is timeless wisdom yes. that generals use in battle. That same information can be used in business can be used in relationships. It's universal. If we have it, they have it. It's the same. End of story. We're already as fully advanced as we're going to get. We just don't know it yet. So if people watching this want to get more information, they want to find out more about this fascinating perspective you have about how the universal civilizations are now interacting with, uh, interacting with us in a really personal way, what's an easy way for them to find you? BrettLuder.com, B-R-E-T-L-U-E-D-E-R.com. You can Google me. Uh, I'm the author of A UFO Hunter's Guide and Song in Your Heart, Story of the Search for the Lost Note. And uh, send me an email. Ask me some questions. I'll be happy to answer. And what's your email? Luder at EsotericGuide.com. That's L-U-E-D-E-R at E-S-O-T-E-R-C-G-U-I-D-E dot -E com. And that information, of course, will be at the bottom of this segment and at the end of the show in the end credits to make it very easy to find Brett Luter. Brett, thank you so much for doing a great job. I really like Brett Luter. He, uh, his insight into the nature of UFOs and especially the current nature of them and his thoughts about humanity and where we need to reshift our own perspective is very, very important, I think. And he got his degree in journalism. So his approach to this is very scholarly. It's uh, very uh, well thought out. He really, when he looks at these things, he really, he really analyzes them beautifully. And Brett's one of those really good people who, when he uh, approaches this subject, he really wants to have an understanding what's going on. He isn't wowed by UFO pictures. He wants to know what's really going on with the event. Well, like what he was saying is that he says that you know, the UFOs are expect wanting us to stand up to the table to come to meet as equals. And that really, uh, to me, has always made sense. So I really love his perspective and how he looks at this whole phenomenon, um, rather than, oh, it's those up there. It's how can we come to meet them. And I would love a chance to come meet them. If you ever get a chance to see Brett Luter or his work, take a look at him on the internet. I think you'll find it very interesting. And now we have a viewer question from Tanya, wanting to know if she's soon going to be moving to a new city. 
We're so pleased to have Tanya here on set with us live for the reading today. Now, she's already mixed the cards. I've already mixed the cards. I've asked my guides to come in. I've asked her guides to come in. And while I'm laying out your spread for the reading, why don't you go ahead and say your question out loud so everyone can, can hear what you're asking. Mm. I wanted to know if I'm going to uh, move to a new city. Okay, great question to ask, yeah. very direct. Now, the, the very first thing I want to tell you is that, yes, you are. Awesome. <laughs> the short answer here yeah. is actually yes. And th the reason I kind of say that yeah. is because uh, there are certain indicators uh, in the Tarot, which is what I use to access my yeah. psychic knowledge, that will say really direct answers sometimes. Mm. This is really direct for you. That's awesome. It says that you are going to be taking charge of this move. It shows you going forward in a very good way, in a very smart way, not in a wild way. So I don't see you uh, per se taking a dart and throwing it at the, mm. the map and going mm. there. You're gonna plan it, you're gonna research it. It's <laughs> gonna have to make sense uh, for you. It's got to be very smart. Uh, during this time though, you know, you're a very sensitive gal. You know, as, as tough as you are and as smart <laughs> as you are, you are still very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So it's you taking care of your health during the process of the move, even in planning it, is going to be very important. Mm. The universe doesn't care if you move or not, just so you know. It's oh. not predetermined. So if you decide to uh, uh, go, it's your decision. Mm. So make it that. Have fun uh, with it that way. Anywhere you want to go is going to be fine. Now, I would recommend for you really uh, talking to other people who are going to be in that area you're considering mm. to get a feel and flavor because it says talking to other people makes things uh, so much uh, better in outcome mm. uh, where you're concerned in this move. Uh, the good points here for you personally are that you're very smart, you Thank are you. Um, <laughs> very strong, you're a strong woman. Boy, if I was getting something done, I'd want you on my team. <laughs> it would get done. Mm. And you have a good willingness to be open to uh, uh, information and uh, 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 perspective on where is the actual best place. I don't mm. see you've decided yet. I can, I can feel that there's a sense of where you'd like to kind of be, mm. but I really don't get a place at all. To me, it's anywhere on the map, to be quite honest. So uh, research for you is going to be important uh, in that way. Mm. Uh, you will be having success in this move, so it's actually going to be very good for you. And even though some of this is um, what you might consider very practical advice for anyone who's going to have a move, mm. sometimes our guides will actually give us really practical advice about something we need to do mm. so that we have the opportunity for more success uh, where that's concerned. I want to tell you that there are no worries here. You don't have a single bad card. Awesome. Everything is good. Yeah. So I would say have some fun with how you uh, decide where you're going. Do the planning, do the research, make some phone calls, talk to people. It's all going to turn out great. And the universe is behind you in the choice you make rather than telling you where to go or what to do. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Tanya, it's so great to have you here. <laughs> I've already you. taken a look at your fingerprints. I've taken a look at the lines and the hand shapes that you have. Please state your question for me. Um, the question was, am I going to move to a new city? Are you going to move to a new city? Yeah. Um, uh, so how hands are not really designed to answer a short-term question like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it pops up, but what I can do is talk about how you're going to make that decision. Okay. That is, uh, you have two very key uh, markers in the hands here. One is over here on these hands, you mm. have what we call the line of clairvoyance. Mm. This is a line of intuition. These are uh, sort of a radio to God where you will have thoughts, impulses that you may not even know where they come from. Mm. And they're designed to follow those impulses to lead you to where you need to go. Mm. So it's a very intuitive process. Now that's on one side. Over here, however, we have what we call uh, the HAL 9000, the uh, <laughs> brilliant mind that has to solve big, complicated problems and uh, do important work. Otherwise, it will get bored. And when it mm. gets bored, it then, well, it's a problem solver. So mm. it has to solve problems. If it doesn't have big enough problems to solve, it will make them. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. we couple that with uh. inside that marker, we mm. have what happens is this line comes along here and mm. right at this location, the line splits and divides in two. And we have what's called the writer's fork. Now, that is a wonderful line 
for a writer. Mm -hmm. A writer who looks at, well, where does this character want to go? Does it want to go down this path? Or does it want to go down this path? Mm -hmm. Or how about this one? For a writer, that's a great question to decide and determine that. But for a human being, well, you might stand too long at the crossroads. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to move forward. And with these two markers, what I invite you to do is to do all the research you need. Get all the information about wherever you might be going. Get it clear. And now set it aside. Now take a long walk to uh, try to lose touch. Don't even pay attention to the information. Instead, feel into nature, feel into your heart, feel into your emotional system, and ask it and ask the nature around you, what's the right decision? Where should I go? What's the right place? And then trust the gut instinct that emerges from that because that's the right answer. And then as soon as it comes up, mm. go with it and trust it. And don't look back, just go for it. <laughs> yeah, does that make sense? Now a couple of things, uh, once you get to that new city, you have a brilliant uh, uh, gift marker here, for it's called the Master Gifted Healer. Mm. You're here to heal other people and help them grow and evolve. Mm. So that is part of your future in this new place. Great. So uh, that's, I see a beautiful mm. things for you, uh, really exciting. Um, the, uh, this long line here shows me that you can be very determined once you get clear on the direction you need to take. The, the real clear, uh, what, what mm. your hands say here is you will always see 10 different choices, but then you have to trust your instincts to know where to go, mm. all right? Well, thank, thank you. you. It's been great yeah, to have you thank here. You. Thank you. you know, I just love having people here live on set for their questions, and Tanya was absolutely wonderful. You know, in her reading, I got it just a hundred percent. She is like moving to a new city. <laughs> I just took one look at her and was like, "Yeah, you're moving, honey." You know, all it seems like she needs to do is to trust her instincts and she'll know where to go. She will know where to go. And her actually uh, doing a little bit of the legwork, doing a little bit of the research, I think is going to work for her in such a great way. So, Tanya, uh, thank you so much for being with us, and we wish you all, all the best on your journey to a new city. We want to answer your questions and address your topics. If you have questions you'd like answered or topics you'd like us to look into, we're easy to find. You can find me at questero.com or email me at joseph at questero.com. And you can find me at marcusthorndike.us or email me at marcus at marcusthorndike.us. In the Sacramento area, you can watch this program on Comcast Channel 17. See more at accesssacramento.org. In the San Francisco Bay Area, you can watch this program on Comcast Channels 23, 28, 29, and 33. And throughout the state of California, you can watch this program on AT&T UVerse Channel 99. Additional channel listings can be found at BETV.org and AT&T-Services.net. We're now on Roku and on selected cable channels throughout the Midwest. You can follow us on Facebook, Vimeo, or YouTube. Simply search Joseph Ernest Martin, Marcus Thorndike, or Paranormal Insights. And be sure to watch our other series, The Magic Minute, exclusively on YouTube, where you'll see easy to use everyday magical techniques to make your life better, because it only takes a moment to make magic. And when you watch, be sure to click like and subscribe. Please send us your questions and topics. So we can share our paranormal insights and answers from beyond the ordinary.